Hi folks and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be making a compact ultralight wood gas stove. Now I have a couple of wood gas stoves already um, but both of them are quite bulky. I wanted to have a go at making a really ultra light version um, from everyday packaging that normally you'd throw away. So I'm going to be using a coffee can um, and this particular coffee is that kind of barista style um, instant coffee that's got grounds in it as well. I'm sure you know the stuff. Um, there are various uh, makes about, um, you know, Kenko have some, uh, Nescafe I believe do one, um, and then all the main supermarkets have their own brand as well. This is a, a Tesco's one. Uh, and this is my favorite one. This is, uh, this is one out of Aldi. And I'm gonna need two of these cans for this project. I'm also gonna be using a sweet corn can. Um, this one is also out of Aldi, but obviously there's, uh, there's other, other stores and other brands available. Um, this one just happens to work well with the, uh, the coffee can that I'm gonna be using. Now I'm gonna be making this in my workshop because I have access to tools and machines. But if you haven't, uh, that's no problem. You know, you could still make this uh, using simple hand tools. Um, if you have a hacksaw and a Stanley knife or a craft knife and a drill, um, you know, you can make this stove. I have got access to these, uh, to these tools and things, so I'm gonna use them simply because it's gonna make my life a little bit easier. Okay, the first thing I want to do after I've emptied these containers of their contents is to remove any um, paper labels um, and the lid off the coffee can. Any uh, residue and stuff will, um, will all burn off on its first use anyway. So I've literally just wrapped them in masking tape um, just to make life a bit easier while I'm marking them out. And the first thing I'm gonna do is mark out the holes. It's a lot easier if you do all your drilling at this stage when the cans are still whole um, because once you've, once you've cut the can, um, it becomes a lot less stable and, and it bends and things like that. So if you, if you do all your drilling at this stage, it will make life a bit easier. Right, I thought I'd better explain what I've been marking out here. Um, I've got three components to this stove. We'll start with the sweet corn tin. This is gonna be my combustion chamber. Um, so this is basically the size of the fire I'm gonna be able to have in here. It's just gonna run on twigs. It's just gonna be a very compact twig, twig burning stove. Um, and I think this will be okay. I think that'll be enough. Um, so basically, the fire is in here. I'm gonna have a series of holes drilled around the top, eight of them which is what these lines represent. That's just to get the spacing even around the top. So there'll be eight holes, um, and that's to allow air into the top of the fire. So the sticks will be burning down in there. Air will be drawn up into the top of the fire here, um, where it will help to burn the gases given off by the primary combustion of the wood. And that's how a wood gas stove works. Gases are given off when wood burns, um, but normally they're just lost into the atmosphere and wasted. Um, the idea behind a wood gas stove is that they're burnt. Um, so you get a secondary burn going on. Um, it, it's a much more complete burn, so you have less smoke. Um, and uh, yeah, much much hotter, much more efficient. So that's how it'll work. So this will have a whole, a whole lot of holes around the top. Uh, I'm gonna cut the bottom of the tin out, um, and I'm gonna insert a piece of mesh in there, uh, just to allow plenty of airflow underneath um, for that primary burn. So that's what's gonna go on with this one. This tin here is gonna be the outer sleeve of the stove. Um, this one will go inside here, once I've adjusted the top, um, and this is gonna have a load of holes drilled around the bottom. I'm gonna cut it down, so it's not gonna quite be as tall as this when it's finished, um, and there'll be holes around the bottom where air can go in, it will pass up between the two layers, and it will go in through these holes in the top of that uh, combustion chamber I showed you a minute ago, and that's how it'll work. Um, so that'll be cut down, holes drilled around the bottom, and then finally this one here, um, I'm just going to cut a pot support out of this, so just the top half of it will be used. I'll drill some holes just to allow good airflow um, 
around the top of the fire and underneath the pan so that flames can sort of lick around the pan and, um, and, it, and it burns well and there's plenty of oxygen and that will just slot on top of the rim of this one here. Okay, so pot stand, outer sleeve, combustion chamber. So I'm gonna start with a thin two and a half mil pilot drill, but then I'm gonna move on to a, um, a stepped drill like this. Uh, these are much better for drilling through thin sheet material and aluminium and things like that, anything thin, um, because it tends to tear less. It's a much less aggressive um, cutting edge um, and uh, and I found that you get a much neater finish. The holes are much nicer and neater. If you try and use a normal drill bit, especially once you get onto the bigger sizes, um, you know it just tends to tear the uh, the thin material rather than uh, drill neatly through it. So that's what I'll be using. Right, that's all the holes drilled, and as you can see, um, that stepped drill bit makes short work of it. Um, and it's it's nice because you just you just plunge it down to the depth you want. It's stepped in increments of two mil that particular one. Um, so I knew that I had to step this to um, the second step, if you like, which will give a six mil hole. So that's on the combustion chamber, six mil hole at the top of that. Uh, Ten uh, along the bottom of the uh, of the outer sleeve of the of the stove. Um, and I put eight mil holes all the way around the top bit, which will perform the, the pot stand. I wanted lots of holes around here, so there's plenty of airflow at the top um, to allow uh, air in and, um, and not to snuff the fire. So uh, yeah, all the holes are done. So the next thing is to remove this section here, which was originally the bottom of the can, and I'm just gonna use a, a can opener for that. Okay, and now on to cutting the cans up. I'm gonna use a diamond cutting disc, uh, the type that you'd normally use in like a Dremel um, or multi-tool type tool, but I'm gonna use my drill press just because it's here um, and it makes life a lot easier. I can put this in the chuck um, and I can use the, the table of the uh, pillar drill to rest my cans on and then when it's cutting, uh, you know, the cut will always be at a set uniform height. Um, but if you haven't got access to either of those, um, you know, you could cut this with a hacksaw, just carefully mark out and just cut to your line and that would do the job fine. Before I do anything else, I want to clean all these edges up. Um, so where I've drilled and where I've cut, I've got all these burrs and nasty sharp bits. I'm going to use my multi-tool here with a wire brush attachment on the end um, to get rid of some of the burrs on the inside. And um, then I'm just going to use good old wet and dry paper and just rub it all the way around those sharp edges and just try and smooth them and um, make them a bit safer. <laughs> Okay, that's everything cleaned up. Uh, now what I need to do is I need to get this, the inner combustion chamber, into this part here. And at the moment, it's just too big. I chose this can because I knew it would be 
too big for this rim um, because I need it to be a good tight fit once it's in there. So what I need to do is I need to just stretch this rim here slightly in order to be able to get that through from underneath and popped over. On the bottom of this sweet corn can, uh, there's a lip um, where the metal was folded over the, the metal of the side wall of the can. Um, and I'm gonna use that lip. Uh, you know, there's a little, a little recess in there. And what I want to happen is that this lip around the top of the coffee can will go into that groove, okay? So that will hold it in place. That's the plan. <laughs> but I've gotta try and stretch this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a bottle here which is just slightly bigger uh, than the opening, okay? And I'm gonna try and force this can down uh, and stretch that lip a little bit, uh, just enough to get this on. Okay, so far so good. I was gonna put a piece on the bottom, uh, the original base of the coffee can, um, but I've decided against it. It'll keep weight down, and it does mean that if I need additional airflow, I can position this up off the ground on three rocks or whatever, uh, and I can get a bit more airflow underneath it. So um, I'm gonna leave that off. Um, it also means that the, the pot support, which just clips on the top like this, um, has somewhere to live. You can invert it, you can put it over the bottom, and um, it's got a place where that can store, and it doesn't take up any more space than the original size of the stove, so that's good. Um, the last thing I need to do is to put in a, uh, a bit of mesh in here to stop the wood from falling through and to create a base to the stove, a kind of fire grate, if you like. I'm gonna use some of this expanded steel mesh, uh, the kind that you find on disposable barbecues, I'm gonna cut out a disc, uh, the right size to fit in the bottom of the uh, stove here, and um, that should do the job nicely. So there you have it, it's definitely compact, and if I put my 700ml Pathfinder cup next to it, you get an idea of scale, um, especially when it's collapsed with the uh, pot support underneath. You can see that um, you know it's quite a lot smaller than the cup itself. And um, this cup nests with a Nalgene bottle just to give you an idea of size. Um, this is, you know, it's about the size of a can of baked beans. If you want to use the stove with a meths burner or an alcohol stove like this uh, mini ball designs one here uh, you can do that all you need to do is just use the pot support and then you can um, you can sit your pot straight on the top like that and it'll act as a windbreak come pot stand as for weight it weighs in at 80 grams so uh, that definitely falls into the ultra light category in my mind and um, if you wanted to use a, a lightweight alcohol burner with it, well, add that and it's still under 100 grams, 98 grams. Not too bad.
Okay, moment of truth. Let's go outside and try it out. So you can see those jets coming out of the air holes there. So it's definitely working. You're definitely getting that secondary combustion at the top of the combustion chamber. It is working. So there we have it, a success. I'm really pleased with it. The only downside to it is because of its size, uh, you can only preload it with so much wood. But um, you know, when the fuel, the resource is free, you know, it's just twigs you pick up off the floor or ones, you know, caught up in trees or whatever, um, you know, a, a good handful of twigs um, will do the job, you know, that'll boil enough water for a meal. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Um, you know, it's compact, it's very lightweight, it'll nest inside my cup and I can even store my alcohol stove and tinder inside the stove as well so um, you know even that little space in there isn't wasted. Just one word of advice um, wherever you choose to use this it will scorch the ground underneath I had this set up on a tree stump and uh, it scorched the tree stump quite badly so just bear that in mind it'll be fine on the earth uh, or on rock probably but um, other than that it needs to be on something fireproof. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Um, you know, wood gas stoves are expensive, especially the, the really small ones. Um, Bush Buddy and Solo stoves, you know, they're, they're 100 pounds to buy one, um, but you can make one and all it'll cost you is two cans of coffee and a tin of sweet corn. Take care and I'll see you soon.